hello, hello, you guys. Listen, we just gonna say it's prophetic word Wednesday. We don't know. We we come on on Wednesday. It's prophetic word Wednesday. So just know we do a prophetic word every Wednesday time, two to three. Um, but hopping on with the prophetic word. Let me grab the link as you guys come on. Let us know where you're from. Let me know who's on and share this because we're in the season right now with this divine shift. And I didn't really know what the Lord was saying when he told me about this divine shift. But this is where we are right now. I'm going to drop this link in a couple of places. But this is big. This is a lot. Um, he is doing a lot with this divine shift. So I'm going to drop it around. Hey, come and shade, little girl. I got more revelation on this divine shift. And uh, the reason we are excited, because look, y'all, I don't know if everybody is feeling this. I don't know if y'all can sense or feel what God is doing. That you can sense or feel that something is happening, that things are changing. Let me know. I don't know if everybody can feel it, but it's just like you know, like you could feel that things are changing. Hey, Ebony. Hey, Regina. Y'all, get excited. Hey, Coquette. I hope I say it right. I never know if I say your name right. Look, we both say each other's name wrong. Let me know. Uh, no. <laughs> but y'all, like, let me know if I'm the only person who can feel like something is different or something is changing or God is, like, doing something. Listen, y'all. The reason I'm late today is because I had to get all of the details for this word because it's a lot. And I heard him telling me, like, with this new revelation that I'm giving you, giving you, you have to write it down and you have to be able to give people details. Before, I would always just flow on things. But he like, no, you need to write this stuff down so that you can deliver it to them in a way that they understand, y'all. My words are changing. What he's doing is different. Get excited. If you're not excited, get excited. He said, don't get to a place where you start to have doubt. Step. He said, he told me to tell everybody, don't worry about what it looks like in the natural right now. He said, he's moving things in the spirit. Like, things are shifting and changing in the spirit. So, don't worry about what's happening in the natural, y'all. I'm going to drop this link in... Um, I always forget when I get on where I want to put it. But if y'all are feeling it right now, get excited. I'm going to tell y'all this before I do it. I woke up. This this word came from a couple of days ago. I don't know when. But it, the Lord speaks to me while I'm waking up. It's like when I wake up, he starts to speak to me. And it all just downloads to me. And it's just so much at one time. So as I'm waking up, I heard the Lord say, the time has come. Get ready. Or something like that. And it was like, the time has come. Get ready. And I was like, but y'all, for those who were here when we did the word about um, Joseph in the prison, where he went from the prison and they called his name and they called him up and it was just like, let's go. Like, that's what's going to happen to people in this season. Like, I was asleep. Just imagine you asleep in the prison. You're doing your thing. You're thinking nothing is changing. And then somebody comes and says, it, the time has come. Get ready. But that's why God has been telling us to prepare. That's why God has been saying, do what needs to be done. This is why all these preparation, get things done, all these words were going forward. Because he knew that such a time as right now would come, where people would start to get a word that says, what is it? The time has come, get ready. So for a lot of people right now, like, tie up those loose ends. When it comes to your ministry, your business, your prayer life, your time with God. Like, don't get caught slipping. <laughs> like, let's say that I hadn't done, I, I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And I didn't have everything in place. And here he comes saying, the time has come, get ready. I'm scrabbling to hurry up and get ready. Like, don't let that be you. Don't be someone where you know God told you to do something. You know God told you to create a thing, to launch a thing, to birth a thing. And you didn't get it done. You didn't finish it. You didn't wrap it up. And then here he comes saying, the time has come, get ready. And you scrambling to get it done. So I'm telling y'all this. I literally woke up in the morning out of my sleep. And I heard him loud and clear. Because this is how... When I know that I know that I know, when God is like, I'm going to make sure you hear this, he does it to me while I'm waking up. So there is no confusion on this. <laughs> because it's as I'm waking up, he's speaking this to me. So wrap those things up. That's number one. Um, start wrapping those things up. If you haven't, you know God told you to do something, start to wrap it up. Not if you know God, you have a time on it. But if you know that you know that you've been slipping, slacking, make sure you get it done. Okay, we put it there. Okay. So, we connected to Joseph's word, and we know we talked about Joseph where he was basically in the place where he was just called on. He was in a prison, they called his name, and it was the time, shave your head, you're like, sh so, clean, get, get cleaned up, change your clothes, get ready, come on, let's get, let's get going. This is the season that we are in right now, where God is about to, your name, like, you know what I'm saying, your name is about to be brought up, 
Like your people's names are about to be brought up in this season. And God is like, I need my people ready. So, where are we going? Where are we going, y'all? It's a lot of information. I'm excited today. I'm excited because I just know that for everybody who's been in the in the fire, the ups, the downs, the trials, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. When you just been in it and you just been like, I know what God said, I know he's about to shift things, I know he's changing things, but it's just I don't know, but we're about to go there today. So let me pray. So Father God, we come to you today. Decrease me, increase you. I pray right now that the revelation behind this word, that people begin to hear it and they feel empowered and they understand what you are saying. I pray that you put the words in my mouth that people will begin to understand what you are doing in this season. I know the word that you gave me for next week, Lord. But I pray that this word gets your people into a place of feeling empowered and that their faith is increased to believe what you said. That's it. I pray that this word allows your people to increase their faith to believe what you said. I don't know what God told you. I don't know what he said to you. But this word, I pray that it just ignites your faith to believe that he can shift and change your things. When we hear suddenly, but it, like this word shows us what that suddenly looks like. And this, we, I know we've been talking about suddenly, but there are so many suddenlies in the word. And God has been talking about getting us back to his original design. And going all the way back to Genesis and Deuteronomy and all of these things where he begins to show us the suddenly. Like, somebody got to say, I'm ready for the suddenly. I'm stepping into a suddenly. Like, the suddenly is about to happen. I don't think people are ready. I really don't. The way that God can really shift and change your life in a moment, in a suddenly. I want people to understand I just hopped out that prayer, but that's okay. I want people to understand that everything that you had to go through was really just God saying, like, I know that they gonna make, like, they will, they, that they, that they getting tested, but they will make it to the finish line. Everything that you had to go through was just to see if you were sturdy, strong enough, durable enough, if you could make it through to get to this point. Why would God just come and send this divine shift and this overflow and these blessings and all of this is flooding at you? If he didn't think, if he didn't know if he could trust you. So if you in it right now where you would be tested, you're being tried, you're in the fire. I really, Lord, I pray that your people like even shift their minds. Remove the strongholds that makes them think that maybe they did something wrong. Makes them think that where the reason that they are where they are right now is that it's something on their end. I, I feel that right now. Like a lot of people feel like you did something wrong or you didn't finish something or the reason that you're going through what you're going through right now is because it's on your end. But God is like, no, uh, I am building you up. We talk about, uh, you know, in the word it talks about a home with a firm foundation. This is what God is doing in us. When we are in a place where we don't really know what's going on and I don't really see what you said, but God, I still trust you. It is literally like he is building up that firm foundation in every single person so that when the storms come, when it, when it hits, when it blows, like you're sturdy, you're not going anywhere. I hear him saying right now that I'm building my people up to have a firm foundation in me. So don't think that if I'm talking to you right now where you feel like, Lord, I just don't understand why I have to go through this. He said, I'm building up a firm foundation in you. I hear that right now for somebody. Um, so Lord, I just pray right now. That's the word. Increases their faith to get them to the place where they believe what you said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let me put this in one more place. One more place, y'all. One more place. Um, it's that firm foundation. I can't let it go. That firm foundation is, is something in that. Um, Holy Spirit, allow me to give me the words for this firm foundation. I literally see a house being built brick by brick. He said this has been beat. He has been building you up brick by brick. He said he has been building you up. But sometimes things have to be torn down. Imagine if you had a house, but the foundation in that home was not built the right way. It wasn't a firm foundation. And many people, the things that we learned, the lessons, the things from childhood, what our parents taught us, what our teachers taught us, all of these things were built. And the foundation wasn't, it wasn't a firm foundation. So what he did is that you had to lose things. You had to, all these things happened to tear down that foundation to build you back up. And this is where we are right now, where many people have had that foundation torn down, built back up, so that you're ready for this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, let's go. So, took the day off. All right. So after I heard the Lord say that, for everybody who's coming on, let us know where you come, where you're from. Uh, share this if you feel led to share. But I heard the Lord tell me, the time has come, get ready. So I took the day off that day. I said, the Lord talking about, the time has come, get ready. I... <laughs> 
<laughs> we're not working today. Okay, sorry. We're not working today. Um, so I took the day off to pray, to fast, to see what the Lord was saying to me. Because if he speaks that way while I'm waking up, I know it's something big in it. So I'm praying and I'm in prayer and I'm praying in tongues. And while I'm praying in tongues, I hear myself say, divine shift. And I had never heard divine shift before. But I'm praying in tongues and I hear divine shift. So I'm like, okay, Lord, what does this mean? So I'm, I'm praying into these, this word divine shift and what I hear him telling me, like, or, or what I'm saying as I'm praying in tongues, divine shift. Y'all, I'm praying in tongues. I pray into the vision. I see, and I only look at my, my, my stuff. I saw yellow lightning hitting the earth. I'm in this vision, and I see, like, this lightning just coming from heaven, hitting the earth hard, like lightning all over the place. Um, and it came from the sky. And lightning su signif uh, symbolizes supernatural power. So as the lightning is coming from earth hitting, I mean, coming from heaven hitting the earth, heaven began to open up like it was literally being ripped open. If you ever read in the word, it talks about rent the heavens. This is what it means. But heaven began to be ripped open. And I saw it just open up. I started, heard him say, like, open heaven, all of these things. Um, and I saw God's hand come out the sky. And he began to touch homes and, and all these different things here on earth. His, his hand came from the sky as if he was putting it, literally putting his hand on things. Putting his hand on people, putting his hands on houses, putting his hands on business. Like, his hand came out the sky. Y'all have been having some crazy visitations, okay? My visions and went somewhere else, okay? We, we, we in somewhere else now. But I saw his hand come down and begin to touch it. If we look at Isaiah 64 and 1, um, I'm going to read it just because I know he told me to read it just so people, if people may not know, um, what it, where it is but y'all i just gotta give y'all this part because this is the main this is how everything else flow so it says oh that you would rend the heavens that you would come down that the mountains might shake at your presence as fire burns brushwood as fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries that the nations may tremble at your presence when you did awesome things for which we did not look you came down the mountains shook at your presence i'm gonna stop right there but in that this is what we're about to see. He said, we're about to see the supernatural here on earth. Like never before. I have a word that's coming next week. Um, if you haven't been spending time with God, if you have not been in his presence, if you have been slacking, if you have been, listen, I need you to, for you, I need you to tell your family, I need you to tell your friends, I need you to go around and do a parade telling people that they need to get to know God before it's too late. Because we, 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 we've been saying this for some time. But on this word that I, that he's given me for next week, you start to pray for your people. Try to get to people. Like, we're about to see the supernatural here on earth. We are about to see God's hand move. And for many people who you've been going through it, he is going to use you to move in such a supernatural way that people have never seen before. He's literally going to use you. And I don't think people understand what this is going to look like. Like, this is why God has been speaking to us about a hunger. Hungering for him, seeking him. When he said my people have become lax last week, it's because in order for you to be able to flow and move in that supernatural way, you have to be in his presence. You have to be getting those downloads. You have to be getting that, that revelation. You have to be getting to a place where he starts to give you the mysteries of the king. Like all of these things, you have to be in his presence. That's part of the supernatural move. But in that, what is a divine shift? Because we know the supernatural is coming. But he's doing it through this divine shift that's to come. He says a supernatural, a divine shift is a supernatural move from one place to another. A change in position or directions. So you may be in a place where you don't know what's about to happen to you. And you supernaturally shift from one place to another. That's why I saw his hand come down. And he was touching. He started to touch things in this vision. This is a divine shift. Where it is a supernatural move from one place to another. You are going from being in a place where you have nowhere to live to where you supernaturally have a home with your credit. You don't even have credit, but now you have a home. You supernaturally going from not having any prospects of a job, and now you have 10 people saying, we want to hire you. Supernatural, a supernatural move from one place to another. A change in position or direction. He led me to Deuteronomy 2 and 2 for this. To really break down what it, what's been going on again back to the basics Deuteronomy 2 and 2 it says the desert years so we know we've been talking about the prison we've been going, we've been talking about the prison to the palace but this one says the, the desert years and I want people to understand that all of these words that he's been giving me in the last like month or so 
are building on each other. Where we talk about Joseph, and then last week we talked about lax and um, the avalanche of blessings. But this divine shift is not just an avalanche of blessings. This is bigger than that. This is this is bigger than that. So the desert years, Deuteronomy 2 and 2. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spoke to me, and we skirted Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn up northward. You've skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward. You've been in this season of lack long enough. Turn northward. You haven't been able to find a new home long enough. Turn northward. You, your marriage has been all over the place long enough. Turn northward. Like it's as if he begins to give you the instructions and everything that you need to get out of that place because he had you there for a reason and for a season. We journeyed this. We've been in this wilderness. We've been in this place for so long. But it's as if God has been looking at them. He's been watching and monitoring them while they were in this wilderness. And in that, that's what he said. This is when we talk about that transition from one place to another. So he said, he's going to start giving people instructions. And this is where I put it on my page the other day where it said, as the Lord begins to show you a thing, when the Holy Spirit begins to whisper in your ear, follow the instructions. He starts to tell you to apply for the loan. Follow the instructions. He starts to tell you to uh, apply for the house. Follow the instructions. He begins to give you the instructions that you need to do to get you to that place where you go from one place to another because if you don't follow the instructions, how are you going to have a supernatural, a divine shift if you are not shifting, if you are not moving with him? And he told me that many people for this divine shift, there's some things that you have to do. There's some faith moves. Like for most people, it's like one little faith move that you have to make in order for you to go from where you are, from this one place to the next. So sometimes he may be telling you to pray more. Sometimes he may be telling you to leave a job. Sometimes he may be telling you whatever it is. He said, I'm going to go back to my page because I heard this last night. But there are instructions when it comes to this divine shift. There's some things that you have to hear because you have to be so sensitive to him. You have to be in his presence to be able to hear what he's saying as he moves you with this divine shift. Don't let the distractions throw you off. Don't let the enemy get you to a place where you're out of position. You know, I was about to put something up, but he had me right on my page the other day. He said, um, stay in position. And he reminded me, he said, when you were little, you used to be in um, drill team. I used to do the drill team. It makes sense. I mean, I'm like a drill sergeant. But he said, you used to be in drill team. And when you were in that drill team, they used to say, attention. And he was starting to tell me, like, I, he said, I need my people to be at, in an attention stance. I need them to pay to be in position for what I'm about to do, meaning that you don't move. But this is where we are right now, y'all. I'm telling you, you got to be able to be still enough to hear the instructions. You got to be able to be like stay in that position long enough so that you can hear what he's saying. And as you do that, he's going to start to get you to that next place. So he told Moses, "You've been here long enough. Now it's time to move. Follow these instructions and go northward." Everything was on the other side of it. They were in the wilderness for long enough, and that was that one instruction that they needed to do to get to the next place. But he said a divine shift will cause a supernatural advancement or upgrade in all of these areas, y'all. We talk about a divine shift, it covers all these areas. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial in your career. Your spiritual life is increased. The revelation that you're getting when you read the word is, is increased. You're not just reading the word and just reading the word anymore. Like Your revelation is on the next state, place. If you have visions, your visions are in the next place. If you dream, you're a dreamer. Your dreams aren't going to the next space. Like, your spiritual life is advanced and upgraded with a divine shift. Said your mental and your emotional. Y'all, I literally for me, I've changed so much. And, and it's, it's such a short amount of time. It's literally like, you could be one way one day again from one place to another. You could be one place one day and you shift and change so quickly. So he said your mental and your emotional changes. Physical. The way that you look, your appearance starts to change. Like he starts to change the way that you look. He starts to change, you know, some people may have supernatural weight loss. Some people may have listen, this is supernatural. I don't know what it is. But he said your physical appearance and, and, and just your physical aspects and, and physicality of you starts to change with a divine shift. Said your finances start to change with a divine shift. You can go from having nothing in your bank account to because this is supernatural. We saw in a vision his hand came down and was placed on houses and people. So when we talk about a, a super a divine shift, 
your finances. People saying, well, listen, people saying, I'm long. Like you, you start to look different. That physical is a big part of a divine shift. But when you get your voice back or come back from a day off, what you mean? Oh, I missed that. Hold on. Um, so finances, you can be in one financial place. Look, I even heard him say bracket. I even heard you could be in one tax bracket and it can change. This is the supernatural move that God is getting ready to do. Y'all, I don't know if y'all hear me, but it is again from one place to the next and it's quick and it is suddenly. He's telling me to go back to emotional. The change and the in the in the healing that will begin to happen when it comes to this divine shift is going to start to break off of you. You're going to start to become a different person. You're going to start to change so much so quickly. You know, he really just been doing so much work in me. Like it's just been crazy. Uh, but it, 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 it's really not work. It's really getting back to your original design. He's reminding me of re you, Rain. Like you've said this before, where you like, I just want to get back to how I was. And that's a part of it. Like that's a part of it. Like. You may have been one way, and you may have gone through so much warfare, so much battling, so much fight, so much hurt, so much pain, so much trauma. But then you get to a place where he starts to work on that emotional and that mental part, and it all breaks off, and you get back to who you were. I really feel like for me, he led me back to this the other day. Um, because I think for me, I had this on my Facebook, and he was like, go look at your Facebook. This, this is what I mean by emotional and, and mental part of it. Cause I feel like for me, the warfare, it just made me get to a place where it was just like, man, it's so much. Like I just have to endure and go through so much. And this just made me just so tough. Like, I mean, I'm tough, but like it made me super tough with the warfare. But he said, go look at your Facebook. And on my Facebook, it said, um, I'm a, and I wrote this years ago. I'm a free spirit who loves love um, and loves uh, physical health and eating and nutrition, all of these things. And he's like, that's who you are like that that free spirit not a new age free spirit but just a free spirit who doesn't care what people think you don't care you do what you want to do you do what you feel like it in obedience i ain't saying wow i'm crazy but but my point is is back to who you were and that's what i feel like when you start to step into a divine shift he's breaking off the things that have been put on you that caused you to be who you've become whether it is the, 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 the journey, the road, the, your walk with God, the, whatever it is, it starts to break off you and it breaks off fast, quick. You don't understand how it is happening. I literally could be one way one day, y'all, because I'm in this right now. I'm just telling y'all. I could be one way one day and I spend time with God and the next day I wake up and it's just like a complete change, like night and day. It's crazy to me. It's crazy, and I'm doing the same things I used to do. It's just this. It's just. It's it's mind blowing. But this is where we are right now, y'all. This is the supernatural part of it, where you can't even explain why it's happening. You can't even explain why you changed so much. You can't even explain why you know so much. You can't even explain how you're able to see so much. I'm hearing gifts right now. I'm telling y'all, if you spend time with God, he, somebody gave me a prophetic word the other day. Y'all, my son is not at school, okay? So, we got we got time today. Gabriel's not at school. He's out for break. Somebody gave me the prophetic word the other day. They said, Yahana, what, it was so much. I mean, the, the, he was really going. It's like a mentor I have. But he was basically saying, the Lord is saying right now, access is granted. But access is granted according to your seek. Access is granted according to your seek. So if I want to go deeper, if you want to go deeper, but we got time. If you want to go deeper, it's according to your seek. I'm telling y'all, God is like, I'm here and I'm available and I will pour it all out. I will pour it all out, but it's according to your seek. And my words didn't used to be like this. He would, he didn't give me this much like this. It wasn't like these steps and this and that and break it down and do this. Like it wasn't like this before. But he said, your access is granted according to your seek. And this for every single person who is a chosen one. Because many of y'all here, I'm seeing y'all right now. All y'all who's on, on it right now, y'all have chosen. God has chosen you. you set apart. He's going to use you in a mighty day. You're highly gifted. Like, I can see the names. Sade, Kamashe, Kim, um, Rebecca, Rain, Lafayette. Like, all the people I'm seeing right now are the chosen ones who God is going to use. And in that, and, and being a chosen one, God is like, I'm here. But it's just this, this, this seek, y'all. This hide and go seek. You want to know more? Go deeper. You want to get more revelation? Go deeper. Dig deeper. 
wake up. Like, I really hear him saying right now that that wake up is that a lot of people are in this place. Like, the enemy is really in this season trying to keep people out of God's presence. He's doing everything that he can do to keep people out of his presence. To keep you from waking up in the morning. To keep you from getting deeper. Because he knows what's going to happen when you go deeper. He knows what's going to happen when you get deeper. Because with this super... Like, you are going... I don't think y'all understand <laughs> how powerful the kingdom is going to be. When, uh, Jasmine and I, we were talking about this this morning. Y'all know Jasmine got a box. She got the box and she sells the box and she has everything. But she said... I was looking this up. Y'all tell me why it was a witch's, a mini witch, beginner witch box set that they could purchase and buy. And I say this all the time. When it comes to the witches, the warlocks, all of the people on the enemy's camp, you don't have to force them to go practice. You don't have to force them to go practice their spells. They don't need somebody telling them, screaming at them, saying, you should get up today and you should go wreak havoc. You should get up today and you should go cast a spell. You should get up today and you should go do some witchcraft. No. They they are on it. They are on it. They wake up 12 to 3 o'clock in the morning. And they cast and they spells. They do and they say whatever they do. Seances. They are doing their witchcraft. And they are studying. And they have their books. And they are going in. And what are we doing? Crying. Oh God. And I'm so tired. I'm so tired. They up. So I'm, I'm telling y'all, I have a word that's coming next week. I got a word coming next week. And it is not cute. It's not one of these. It's not this type of word. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all that right now. It is not this. It is not this word. But I'm saying it right now as a beginning word to what's coming next week. Look, it's not this. <laughs> it's not this type of word. We're not, we not celebrating the divine shift next week. Get ready. But my point is, why are we, like, I, I, I and, and when I realized this, I was sitting there. <laughs> I was sitting there, and I was just like, why is it that the kingdom got to get pacified to do what God needs us to do? Why is it that you got to get pacified to do it, to wake up, to study, to read books, to read the Bible? Y'all, I, I looked this up, because I'll be like, what are we, I'll be telling, i tell God, like, I need to know what I'm fighting against. I need to know. Please protect me. But I got to see. You know how you got you about to fight somebody and you want to know a little bit more about who you about to fight or something like how many people did they beat up? How many people won? Like <laughs> I want to know what I'm up against. Y'all, they literally have books. Like the same way we have books, they have their books. The same way we have like a Bible that has everything, the manual for what we're doing. They have a Bible that they can go to and they are reading it. So I said, Lord, I got to go on TikTok. Let me go look this up. Y'all, I had to go do inhale and deliverance afterwards. I was done. Like, okay, Lord, <laughs> this is this is too much. But they are doing it. They are not sleeping. Like, I mean, we could sleep. Y'all get my point. My point is, nobody has to pacify them. Nobody has to baby them. But yet we cry and we whine and we fuss and we we, we get mad at God. We get frustrated. We do all of this when God is like, I'm training you just like they in training. They in training to take up. Listen. With the judgment that's to come, with what's about to happen and shift in this world, they the same way we have been in the in in the in the caves and and being in, on the other side and, and training and developing and everything that God has been doing, they over there doing the same thing. Just like with Moses with the rod, they they throw it down and they had a power. They doing everything, but it's compared to us. But it's like which one is real, which one is true. But if you're not haven't been in God's presence, it's for the people who have been in God's presence. It doesn't matter what they do; your power gonna be stronger. This is what God is doing in us right now, raising us up to a point where you can't even, they can't even compete with it. But for every person who's crying and whining, I, I just really feel right now it's a push for God's people to get back into the secret place. It's a push for God's people to get back to reading the word, to get back to that seek, to be an intentional. Yes, it's a push to get back to being intentional. Because there's so much that God is going to do through us. He's going to use us. I'm telling y'all, every person here, he is going to use you. I've been telling this. I've been saying this because he's been speaking this marvel to me. Like, you know how they, the super, like the superheroes come out? This is how we're about to be. 
You know how, like, they said Wonder Woman come out. She come out with her sword and everything. Superman come out. All of these people, like, we are literally about to be coming out like superheroes with what God has placed inside of every person. But he keeps talking about this training and this development that has to happen in the secret place. I've been struggling, praying, reading his word. I'm, listen, the enemy is coming because he knows, y'all. I'm telling you, you got to push through in this season. You got to push through in this season. He waits every day I wake up. I wake up feeling good. Then he and me, I'll sit there for a second. And I see that I'm zoning out because I can just feel something that's on me. I said, hold on. Let me just journal. Let me move around because I can feel and sense that something is trying to get me to not be focused. Get back to our first love. Look, like I just got my flowers. Listen, in this season, don't let the distractions. And this isn't every season, but this is so important for this season. I'm telling y'all. My son, I wish I had the picture up here. My son drew the vision. The vision that I had, my son drew it a week before me. He drew it. He drew heaven open up a week before me. And this word that I have next week, my son drew it two weeks before I got it today. So I know that he's using him. Um, But y'all, like, we ain't even there. Okay, we almost there. Look, we got time. Gabriel's here. Um, distractions. Cut them out. Write a list of what your distractions are. Put them in the chat. What are your distractions? Because you sometimes we got to be self-aware. We need to be self-aware and know what the distractions are. I know in this season, the enemy try to get me to sleep in. Because I've been doing a lot, moving around. He try to get me to sleep in. But I know that's a distraction. So I have to be intentional and say the enemy knows that if I sleep in, I'm not going to be able to hear what God is saying. I'm not going to be able to get the revelation that I need. I'm not going to be able to see what he's saying about a divine shift. I'm not going to see these visions because I'm sleeping too much. She says, sleep. You got to know what the enemy is using to keep you from God. Going to bed late. Facebook. Social media. What is it? Like, let's be real. And let's get intentional about what the enemy is using. Because that's the thing that's going to keep you from stepping into it. Because it's like, as God is trying to, like, just imagine. I allow the distraction to keep me from getting the, the everything I needed in this word. Now, I don't have it to give back to other people. I, I can't give it to other people because I allow the distraction to keep me from getting what God is trying to get to me. Dating. That's a big one. Other people. Distractions coming left and right. Listen. Write the distractions in the comments, y'all. Because it's like, for me, anytime I'm more self-aware with myself. And I call myself out and I say, this is something that's holding me back. This is something that's hindering me. Clubhouse. You got to be careful with Clubhouse. Clubhouse will suck up your time. You could be in one room for two hours on Clubhouse. When you could be doing something completely different. You got to be mindful in this season. And not to say that your whole day needs to be that you're in prayer. Unless you're in a season where God is like, I need you to pray and intercede in war. I'm coming out of that where I really couldn't do a lot of other things because I had to pray. But in that, in that same place, you got to be able to balance it out. Are you praying in the morning? Are you, are you praying at night? Are you journaling in the morning? Like really getting your routine and getting back to the place where it's like, Lord, I'm here. I'm available. I'm an open vessel, okay, because he's looking and he's, we said this last week, God is looking for open vessels. That's all he's looking. He's like, who can I pour into? Remember we had the water bottle last week. I'm looking for open vessels that I can pour all of this into. Are you present? Are you available? Is your jar, is your vessel open to receive what he's trying to give you? Because that's what he's saying in this season. For me, it's just like, I need to make sure that I'm in position and in place to receive everything that he's given me. And even for me, it's like this rest. It's like a work and a rest type of thing. Because I know in the new year, it's, it's like, now, now go. Like, a, like a, a, a bull with the door opened up. Like, new year, come on, let's go. So it's still like this rest. So you got to know what season you're in and kind of move with him on that. Worrying about things that are out of my control. You said it yourself. If it's out of your control, give it to him. Put it in the box. And don't even worry about it. Um, Tell me close to you. Sleep, social media. Distractions, y'all. So now we wrote them down. We know what the distractions are. So we got to make sure we look at it and say, all right, these are the things that I know are keeping me from God. So what do I need to do to make sure that I can get to him in this season so that I'm an open vessel to receive everything that he wants to get from me so that I can shift into everything that he's doing? Like many people are stepping into destiny in this season, like destiny. I heard him say today, um, completion, you know. Even if you look on my Facebook, it says 777. It's been up there for so long, you know, seven. He created the heaven and earth, seven days. So he started, he's been speaking to me about completion in life. And usually, usually that's typically when you start to step into destiny. And a lot of people are in a place where 
You, you are right on the other side of stepping into your destiny, walking and crossing over. But it's always that one faith act or that one thing you have to do to get on the other side. We talked about that again before. So financial. Your finances can shift from one place to the next. Suddenly. Suddenly. All these are suddenlies. And then your career. Work. Promotions. Being promoted. That kind of thing. Now, I, y'all know, I've been asking the Lord, like, Lord, I need an example. I need examples of these divine shifts. What do they look like? He led me to Paul and Silas, Acts 16, 25 through 26. Because for me, he can speak these things to me. But I want to see it in the Word. Like, I want to see what these divine shifts and all these things look like in the Word. So we go to Acts 16, 25 through 26. He said, this is an example of a divine shift in the Word. Um, with Paul and Silas, it says, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, su suddenly, we've been saying suddenly, right? Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. He said, this is what a divine shift looks like. Maybe you were in bondage. Maybe you were in a place where you didn't know how you could get out of something. I don't know, I'm hearing finances, financial bondage, where it's like, I, I literally could see something, hold on, I'm, I'm getting a vision right now. I see somebody sitting at a table. Now, we're reading about the prison, but I'm hearing him saying that this is for people with in financial bondage right now, where, let's go back and it says, you're a prisoner to your finances. You're in this place where you're calling out to God and you're praying, singing hymns and, and, and praying. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, a shaking. And then the doors were open and the chains of bondage, that financial bondage was loose. But I see somebody sitting at a table and it's like they have some cash in their hands and they're counting it. Like, Lord, how am I supposed to get to this next place? I see you opening up your wallet, looking at your wallet. Like, or maybe, no, he said this. How am I going to make ends meet? A lot of people are in a place of financial bondage. And the Lord is saying this is an example of how quickly, suddenly, immediately he can get you out of financial bondage. This is a sudden divine shift in your finances. That's what he's saying right now with this. We're talking about the jail and the scripture, but I'm telling you right now, he's saying you might be thinking that he can't get you out of it, but this is that divine shift. When this happens, this is how quick and suddenly he can get you out of this place immediately and suddenly. And so I'm trying to see what else is happening. So I see the person, like they took the wallet and they put it down like underneath something and they brought it back out. I don't know if there's a creative miracle or what's happening, but this person took the wallet they put it like underneath a desk and they brought it back out and it's a whole bunch of money in it. Like I feel like this is what God is talking about. Like he can suddenly put money in a bank account. He can suddenly send somebody to, to de deposit money to you or send you a gift or sow into your ministry or business. But I'm seeing a suddenly in finances right now. That's what I'm seeing. Like he's just using this Acts 16, 25 through 26 to, to, to use Paul and Silas. But this is a suddenly in finances as well. We have definitely been in a financial wilderness for a little time. Listen, he's saying this is how quickly he can turn your financial situation around. Immediately the doors were open and the chains were broken. So y'all, as we can see in the word, first off we saw him tell Moses, go, go north. Instruction. Now we see him saying, this is how quickly I can get you out of that bondage, whatever it is. If it's your health. Whatever you need, go back to this Acts 16, 25 through 26 and look at how quickly he can get you out of it for my kingdom work. Listen, that's that right there. I didn't even I didn't even get that earlier. But he said this is supernatural. This was a supernatural move right here. This this like the, the, this could not be chalked up to anything but supernatural. And much of what we're about to see, you, there is going to be no explanation to how it was done. That's how you're going to know it's God. There is no explanation. How did the how did how did the prison doors just open up? Supernatural. How were all of your bills paid? Supernatural. How was all of your student loan debt completely erased so that you could buy that home that you wanted to buy? Supernatural. I'm talking to somebody right now, you know. Um, but this is what he said. It's going to be supernatural like that. You just you just you can't explain it, and all you can do is say God did it. I wrote that as a status a while ago. All you can say is God did it. Divine shifts are always drastic, dramatic, and dimensional. We see it in this example right here. Drastic meaning acting rapidly. He said, stop doing things sluggishly if you're expecting a drastic breakthrough. Divine shifts are always drastic, dramatic, and dimensional. 
Stop doing things sluggishly if you're expecting a drastic breakthrough. We see even in, if we go back to Paul and Silas, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were active. They were doing something. They weren't just sitting, not doing anything. They were actively doing something so that God could step in and move on that divine shift that happened, that supernatural shift, that supernatural move that happened. They were doing something. So now is not the time to sit down and cross your hands. Now is not the time to get lazy unless God has you in a place where you are like in prayer, intercession or something like that. And he's like, this is what we're doing right now, but then I'm going to open up the door and tell you to go. But they were doing something. They were active. Um, he said dramatic, over the top, next level blessings. Like this is where we talked about that avalanche last week where this divine shift, when you start to see things, this is that Amos 9 that we talked about. One thing after another, your head will spin. I'm hearing it now, Amos 9 is a divine shift. Because even if we look at that Amos 9, it says one thing after another until your head will spin. Everything will be, be happening over and over. This is a dramatic blessing. Mm -hmm. This is a dramatic breakthrough. This is what he's saying. And then dimensional means teach, touching, and affecting every area of your life. So we already talked about that. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial, and career. Like it, it's not just one area. It's not just he, ble he blesses your finances. He blesses your everything. Your whole life is blessed. But what he told me is that as you begin to go through your journey, your walk, and all of these things, you start to step into destiny. And then that's when he's just like, all right, now it's time. Now it's time for us to move. Now I'm about to. Now you're about to see why you went through so much, y'all. This is where we are right now. This is the divine shift. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels. Just imagine while they were in the prison singing and praying these hymns, and then it just they just sitting there praising God, and it's just boom out of nowhere. Whole life is blessed. Yes, like y'all. Whole life is blessed. Your whole life is blessed. Can you imagine? Like you try to do things your own your your own way your whole life. You try to get the job. You try to do all these things your way your whole life. And then God says, come here, I'm calling you. I'm, you're about to lose it all to gain it all, stripping things away. And then he builds you up to a place where your whole life is blessed. We see it in the word, like even with Job. Job lost everything. His kids, his family, like his, family his, 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 his riches, all of it. But it's really like that. He, he had to lose it all to gain it all. Double for your trouble. You know, even with the accuser and, and the enemy, it's like seven times. You get you get back seven times. I've been in the courts of heaven lately. And even in that, you go up against the enemy and the accuser. Mm -hmm. And if it's like if he takes it from you and he steals it, he has to pay you back seven times. But I hear him saying, what is the enemy stolen from you? He always has me ask people this. What is he stolen from you? That's what you want to go and pray and, and pray that you receive it seven times, like seven times more. If he stole your finances seven times, if he stole your family seven times, if he stole your peace, you're going to have seven times more peace for whatever he stole from you. But what, does he, what did he steal from you along this journey? If he stole, look, seven times more time, I'm telling y'all, think about what the enemy stole from you. And that's how you're going to be able to tell what you're going to receive when you start to step into a divine shift. It's that thing that he stole. It's time seven. So, we almost done. My finances, my peace, my focus. Listen, time seven. Look, just put a time seven on there. Mm -hmm. From where it was to what God is going to do and how he's going to move and shift everything. I'm telling y'all, this is in the Word. I don't know where it's at. I know the Word. It's in there. I can't even tell y'all where it is. Go look it up. But if it's, it's, it's in the Word, it talks about if an accuser is found, he has to pay back seven times. So, search that. <laughs> I'll look it up in a second, but it's it's in there. And when I was in the course of heaven, that's what he was saying. It was really in a place seven times. So whatever the enemy stole from you, that's how you're going to feel. If you were just, if you've been in a place where you have had no peace and you lack peace throughout this entire journey, you're going to be so peaceful. You're going to have so much peace. If it was joy that the enemy stole from you, you're going to have so much joy when you get that seven times back. I'm telling y'all, this is where God is taking us right now. He told me to read this. And we're almost done. It says, God says, everything you thought was impossible is about to be made possible. For many people, everything that you thought was impossible is about to be made possible. All those things that God spoke to you, you're about to see it happen. Every word that was spoken over your life, you're about to see it happen. Every promise, you're about to, 
remain active. Do your part. You do your part, he's going to do his part. Because even for me in this divine ship, there was a lot of things that I had to do where he started to give me those instructions and he started to speak these things in my ear and I started to hear it. But there was work on my end that I had to do, whether it was in prayer, whether it was act, actually doing physical work, whatever it was. But he, I'm hearing him saying right now, you do your part and I'll do my part. And I hear him saying, tell my people, they do their part, I'll do my part. You do your part, he does his part. He told you to go do it, start doing the lives and praying for people, do your part and you're going to see him do his part. If you if he told you to start, I know Rain and I was talking to Jam the other day talking about handing out Bibles. He told you to go hand out Bibles. Do your part. He's gonna do his part. I hear it right now. You do your part, and I will do my part. Now, I'm telling you, I can see. I see it. I see it. Like I see it. The amount. I wait. I wait. I wait. Um, I wait on that part. That's probably next week's word. He said. This is what he had me write. So this word, as you can see, is visions. Like, this is what I mean. Like, it's just so much. This word has been what he said. It's been visions. It's been waking out of a dream. It's just been so much at one time. But the, when I talk about that spiritual level of a divine shift, what you're going to start to see, how you're going to start to move, the revelation that you get, the power and the authority that's building up, listen. This is just the beginning. I already know God is about to put put something on me where I've had I've had words where it's just like people are going to be like, how did this get on you? I've had multiple people come to me and they and they told me they said people are going to wonder how did this get on you? It's going to be the same thing for y'all. Like every person who's in a place where you are diligent, and you are intentional, and you are like, I'm not about to allow the devil to throw me off. For every chosen person, set apart person on this live right now, I am telling you, if you do not let the enemy distract you and throw you off. You, the, 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 the rise or the elevation that God is going to do through you for his glory it's going to blow people's minds they're going to be like how do you know this where did this come from how are you how, how? This, this is the supernatural that we're about to step into mark my words come back to this video <coughs> come back to this video in February I hear February come back to this video in February and watch and watch it says my child tell my people that I am working Working on things behind the scenes. They may not see much movement in the natural, but trust and believe things are shifting in the spirit. I need them to keep their eyes on me. Deliver next week's word with, with confidence, but encourage them to keep their eyes on me in this season. I love you, God. So I told y'all about next week's word. I don't even know. <laughs> okay, I've never had, I've never had a word like this. I've, I've had some words like this, but not like this. Um, so this is a different type of word for me. So um, I'm just gonna tell y'all that I've never had a word like this. Most of, most of my words are about the journey and encouragement and where we're headed. But this is where the world is headed. This is more of a like the world, a world word type of thing. Or I don't know. We'll see. But in that, keep their eyes on me. Keep their eyes on me. I'm telling y'all, keep your eyes on him. Don't get distracted. Don't get tone thrown away. Don't get turned away. Witches and the warlocks, they up, and they are casting their spells and they're doing their thing. But I'm telling you, it's going to come a time where the people who have been steadfast and unmovable and rooted and stayed in God's presence and didn't give up, it's as if you're going to become, you're going to come out the ground so quickly with so much power and authority to go out and do what God needs to be done in this earth. It's only for the people who stay rooted, who keep their eyes on Him. I'm telling y'all right now, like. The distractions, they got to go. They have to go. And as you begin to step into the divine shifts for those people who kept their eyes on him, who stayed connected and rooted, and, 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 and you didn't fade away. I'm hearing people him saying, I'm hearing it right now. Um, What is this? This is, um, okay, I'm hearing. So I don't know if y'all know, ever noticed that. Hearing is like I'm hearing this, but seeing is I'm seeing. But that's funny to me. I'm hearing um, that it's people who, he's called you off of a job. Or he's called you into a season. It says you've, you've been in the wilderness, but it's like he called you into even deeper into the wilderness. Because as you go deeper into the wilderness where he tells you to leave a job or leave a person or leave family members or leave things. As he calls you deeper, that means that he's pushing you to trust him more in that season because it's just your roots are growing deeper. Just imagine every time God pulls you into a season of transition or a place where you don't know what's to come. It's like your roots are just growing deeper and deeper. It's just like... 
Just imagine a tree's roots growing deeper so that no matter what comes your way, you're not going anywhere. And this is what God needs in this season. So that when the enemy comes, when we get to this place where everything is all over the place and all of this stuff is a mess and a wreck and it's chaos, you've been with God. You've been tested. You've been tried. You are rooted. You are strong. He can trust you. You are durable. You're not going anywhere. No demon in hell can scare you. No witch or warlock can get you to run and, and say, I, I, what is the word? Not repent. I reject. Anyway, what is it when you give up God? I don't even know what it means anymore. Whatever that word is. Now I'm mad because I can't remember it. Y'all know the word. Anyway, whatever that word is, I'm, you're not moving from that. This word is really, I need this word. I can't get the word, y'all, sorry. But anyway, <laughs> this is really bugging me. But you're not moving away. You're not running away. You're not rooting. You're not going anywhere. I want people to understand that part. That everything that you're going through right now is that. Denounce. Renounce. Denounce. Thank y'all. It was messing with me. Denounce. Retract. One of them. Renounce. Denounce. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Nah. They got it. Renounce. Renounce. Denounce. It's one of those. I think it's renounce. That's the word. But you're not in a place where you denounce. Y'all confusing me. <laughs> y'all got the word. It's one of those. God. Because it, that, he doesn't want you to get to a place where you allow fear, all these things get you to a place where you just waver. You're not wavering. That's it. You're not going to waver. You're not wavering. And that's why you have to go through it. Who y'all? Y'all, I think that's everything. I think it's denounced. It could be denounced or renounced, but it, it's one of those. But I feel as if, imagine when things are going, the, if there's chaos in the world. Imagine somebody came up to you and say, denounce God right now or renounce God right now. Like, you're not. Because you've been tested. And you, you're you not moving. You're not going anywhere. So that's for another word. Like, I feel like that's next week's word. Um, but I just wanted to shift us into where we're going next week. Because I know that he's building on these words um, to get us to where he's taking us. But just know, this divine shift... This is what's going on. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. This is what it sounds like. This is what this is what's to come. So I pray that today's word encouraged everybody. Holy to get to be wrong or even denounce. What's renounce? Go ahead. That sound is really coming. It's coming. It's soon. Let me know what renounce is, y'all. I think it's renounce. Um, but in that, this is where we are. This is what's to come. This is where we're headed, y'all. And get excited. Get excited, get excited, get excited because this is where we're going. Like I said, every single person that's on here, I know that you, even you, Destiny, listen, girl. God is like, I I'm rooting for you, okay? Because you are so, you may not know it, but you are chosen, set apart. God is going to use you in a mighty way. And this is why the enemy tries to get you wrapped up. I literally see you inside of a ball of yarn, like wrapped up. It's like he's been trying to keep you so wrapped up and tangled in this ball of yarn of confusion and just just so as if but i see you climbing out of it so lord i pray over destiny right now i pray that she is in a place where she can get to a place of being able to have clarity and to be able to see you so that she can get out of this whatever is binding her up. it's like bound it's like he's trying to keep you bound in this thing but i hear the lord saying that it's up to you to climb out of what's binding you he's there and he's there and present and available like a very present help. But I see you climbing out of what's binding you. I see you, like it's you climbing out of it. Message me later and let me know what this is. Because I don't feel like this is something that we're writing on here. But I just feel led to put it now. But I just see you in this ball. And he's saying it's up to you to climb out of this ball. It's my living situation. You know. Yeah I see you very tired and very weak. Like even as you climb out of this ball you just. You look disheveled like it's just weighing you down so much and you're so tired and exhausted and drained. You, really, I can tell how tired and how draining it is for you. So, Lord, I just pray right now. I said you take me up in the spirit and show me what's going on around Destiny with this this ball of yarn and what's making her feel so tired. Um, it's like this. It's like this animal. It's a, it's a, it's a spirit, but it's like it's not even coming out while I'm in this vision. Just so y'all know, like, even when I talk about being able to see things, like, 
how the Lord uses me now is that I can go up into the spirit and go up into visions and see what's going on around people. But I see you in this place where this thing is so hidden and it's really, it's like it's in the dark and all I can see are his eyeballs. But Lord, I pray right now that you allow me to go up and see what it is. I turn on the lights in this space to be able to see. It's just like this, it's like a dog or a werewolf. It's like a werewolf, wolf in sheep's clothing type of thing. It's, it looks like a werewolf. You, who are you around? It's somebody you around. Because it's like this werewolf is like hidden. So Lord, I pray right now that you allow me to come in with the sword to come for whatever this is that's coming after her. I literally see me walking up to him and just stabbing it. It's not even trying to run from me or anything. I just see me walking up and just stabbing it um, in the spirit to be able to go and flow into the natural for you. I see you coming out and I see you like washing your face, getting dressed, looking in the mirror. You're going to be able to see yourself clearly now. It's as if this thing or whatever this is has been stopping you from being able to really see yourself. It's been attacking your worth. It's been attacking your, just your self-care. Your, it's just been affecting you so much. But I just see in this vision that I just came and stabbed it. But I see you in the mirror looking at yourself like brushing your hair, combing, combing your hair. Message me in the next two days. Like, usually it takes, from spirit to natural, it usually takes like a day or so. But I see you really changing your clothes. It's like you got dressed. Do you work? You got on like an interview or something? I don't know if you work. But you just change your clothes like you have on an interview outfit or something, getting ready to go on an interview. Um, but I just see this like, so Lord, I asked you to show me what's going on. I just see like angels coming and, and I dispatch angels. It's like they coming and dragging this wolf away, getting it out of the scene. The lights are on right now and it's like they're cleaning it up. And I'm walking up to you now and I see I'm giving you a hug. I don't know if you're still on Destiny, let me know. But I'm giving you a hug. You have on these new clothes, these new garments. But God is saying like, he wants you to come to him and really, like, it was more in the mirror. This was inner work for you. This is inner work for you. He wants you to come in the mirror and, and talk to him about you, your, your self-esteem, your worth. This is inner things that he's trying to do in you. I'm shaking. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm seeing it, Destiny. Like, and I can tell that things are, like, the way God uses me now is that I can go in the spirit and things will begin to shift in the natural. But I'm still here. So, okay. So, for you, that part in the spirit has been already handled. I can see that the lights are on. I can see that I'm giving you a hug in this vision. I can see where we are right now. Um, and it's like I'm moving your hair out the way, but I'm putting you in front of the mirror. It is so much worth self-esteem. Like he's taking you back, even childhood. I see childhood. It's like as if I'm in this vision of you and I'm looking, I'm behind you in the mirror looking at you. And it's like you're taking off the outer layer of who you've become or things that have happened to you. And all of that is coming off as you spend that time. You probably have been thinking, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to talk about when I spend time with God? Or like, you've been in that. Like, what am I supposed to do in my time with God? Um, I'm telling you right now, the, the layers, the hurt, the pain is in your word. Being open and honest about that. Because I see things stripping off of you. I don't know. I, I mean, I see you getting a new job. I don't even know if you work. But I see you getting dressed up for a new job. Like, I don't, again, I don't know if you're here. I don't know if you work or you've been looking for a job. But I see you dressed for a new position and a new role. As you start to dig in, he's going to start to show you purpose and show you who you really are. Everything about you is changing. Like your clothing is changing. The way you look is changing. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot with you, Destiny. Um, so I just decree and declare breakthrough. Let there be breakthrough in her life. That this wolf and sheep clothing that has been around her will no longer impact her anymore. I break off this 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 ball that she's been in, this yarn, whatever it is. I just started working. Maybe it's a promotion, but yeah, I, I see you with like a change of clothes. Like you change your clothes and I see it could be a promotion or something like that or maybe a better job. Um, but I just speak that forth right now, Lord. Whatever it is that you are doing for her in this season, I break it off of her right now. I break the, I'm hearing chains. We break the chains off of you, Destiny. You have chains on you chains we break the chains off of her right now lord and we decree and declare breakthrough and blessings over her life in jesus name we pray amen yeah i'm hearing chains like, there's some things that's been trying to hold you down all right y'all like i said my son is um he, he's on spring break right now um man that that thing was hidden i've never seen a spirit high like that usually they out front that man 
That's that's something. I've never seen it hide like that. That's crazy. Look, no problem, Alicia. Look, like, I know that for me, you know, and y'all, I put prayer strategies on my page, too. The things that the Lord gives me every morning. So, like, on my Facebook, I try my best, unless he calls me to pray. The only time I really don't write is if I'm in a place where he's like, no, just, I need you to pray. I need you to just pray today. Don't post. But even the prayer strategies that I write are things that I hear. I put the scripture on there so you can tie it to scripture. Um, because I want all of us to make it to the promised land. Like, I don't want to be the only person that's just like, oh, this is what God is doing. Like, no. I want the church, the body, I want everybody to be able to get to a place where we make it to the promised land um, without delay. So even the prayer strategies that I put up, those are some things that I hear. Break every chain and every ball. Look, and it, it, you just came out of a ball of yarn, but I saw chains. But it's in your chains are going to break when you sit in His presence and you address the hurt, the pain, the tears, the the unworthiness, all of that stuff. It's, it's wrapped up in that, and you're gonna start to step out um, from that. Oh, Jarvis, yeah, I noticed you the other day. Found your ministry a week or so ago, and it's been a blessing. Keep this going as it's been expanded. Thank you. Look, I'm telling y'all, I I know what God is doing in this season for many of us. Like. This is, I keep saying, it's only the beginning. This is just the beginning for many of us. And if we stay focused and rooted and grounded and in, in, in his presence, like, again, I know sometimes it gets, it gets distracting, it gets hard. Look at sheep's clothing. Oh, just message me, Destiny. I, I, it's, it's in the word. Um, but that's what I'm seeing. And I'll give you more details of what was going on around it, too. Um, it's going, it's been expanded, so thank you. Um. So yeah, it's it's really I just know what God is doing. It's not this is not just me. But I, I know all of us are in different seasons, so we gotta understand we're in different seasons. But what the Lord began to tell me is that you go on and you show them and tell them what's to come. Like you go on and you speak this and even though you may not be in this season right now, this is the journey, this is the walk, this is what God is doing. So even if you're not in a season right now where what I'm saying one hundred percent resonates, it doesn't mean that you may not he may bring this he may not bring this video back up later on. And it resonates in that season. Because even with these words, because the words that God gives me are time and seasons. You know, my gift is more uh, Issachar anointing. So it's what's going on in the time and seasons. What is God doing? Um, but if it's the journey and it's a walk, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. This word will probably relate. Somebody may see this word six months from now. And they're in that season where it's a season of a divine shift for them. And they hear it and it's like, this is a right now word for me. So... I just want people to know, like, if it doesn't resonate right now, it doesn't mean that it, it will not. He may bring this word back around a few months later, and you are in a season where you are about to step into a divine shift, and it resonates. I answer the course of heaven. So that part, I, I couldn't do right now. Um, the course of heaven, really, I had to learn this. I had to study it. Um, Holy Spirit led me to it. There's a book on it as well. I think his name is Robert Henderson. Um, but it was just me testing things out for courts of heaven. But I pretty much read that book, and then Holy Spirit just led me through Course of Heaven for that. Um, so yeah, makes it a promised land. Yes, that's the goal, and that's the thing, y'all. Like, the goal is that we go from what did He tell us? A uh, divine ship from one place to another. Even if we think about the word journey, it's going from one place to another. It's going from Egypt to the wilderness to the promised land. If you don't know what we're doing, like we're getting to a place where we're stepping into the promised land, but also that as we go to get to the promised land, like the Lord is using us. Like he wants to develop us. He wants to grow us. He wants us to, to shine for his glory. He wants us to be those vessels in the earth, that those instruments that he's using, whether you are a singer, a worship leader, a, a prophet, an apostle, uh, a teacher, whatever God has called you to do, uh, 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 whatever, whatever it is. You're an instrument, and God wants to use you for his glory. Like, I'm, an, I'm just an instrument. I'm just an instrument that he wants to use to encourage people, to give them the roadmap to get to where he's trying to take them, because this journey is confusing. Like, if you go and you just have no idea where you're going, you have no idea why you're doing this, you know you want God, yes, but where are we headed? What are we trying to do? Where are we going? That's the goal. Like, for me, my thing is, I do the prophetic words, I help people, I help people, you know, to get to that place um i put the link up if you guys want to check out other things that we do on the business or ministry side we have youtube channels we have um clubhouse we have patreon so if you want i have a lot of teachings like over 100 teachings on my patreon it's ten dollars a month if you want more teachings like this to really get you equipped if you click the link around here you can grab the patreon link 
And that one has over 100 teachings that I've been doing for like the last year or so. That really helps people get, get equipped on the journey and the walk. Um, prophetic consultations where the Lord uses me to, I just did one the other day where he uses me to see where people are and get breakthrough in their life. Kind of like destiny, but a little different. Um, membership programs, like it's just a lot that he has me to do. So I'll put the link there if you want to check it out. Um, this word is for me today. I'm glad to hear it, Alicia. See that on you. That's one of my prophetic graces as well. Yeah. So Jarvis, yes, is a card. Like most, when it comes to my prophetic words, it's timing and seasons for sure. I'm 100%. Um, and then if you guys know me from Clubhouse, that's more of an apostolic uh, grace over there where it's more so equipping his people. So this is more time and seasons of this is what God is doing right now. But if you follow me on Clubhouse, it's more so this is what we need to do to get there. Like it's more of an equipping word. Um, you can follow us over there at It's Journey to the Kingdom. And God has been telling me to connect everything. So in the new year, he's really been giving me strategy on how to connect everything in a more well-rounded way from one place to another join the membership uh no lucrece we actually are doing oh the membership we're about to start because like i said he's having me rest a little bit right now to get ready we're doing the 10-week takeover challenge it starts january 2nd i believe so we're doing the 10-week takeover challenge starting on january 2nd so that's what we're doing in the membership next week i believe he's, he told me to rest next week just because it's just been a lot of prayer and intercession and a lot lately but next week is the, first, the second is when we start the 10 We Take Over Challenge. So that's what's happening in the membership program. That's for anyone who has a ministry or a business. God told you to write a book, anything like that. He's been having me prepare that. That has over 60 hours of teachings about your ministry, your business. If you want to learn YouTube, TikTok, how to create content. We have over 60 hours of teachings in a membership program. But I want people to understand, I've been doing this for a long time. It's been three years of me doing this. And so this is where God starts to tell you to do a thing. And you may be doing something and you don't see it growing or progressing or getting to that next place. Listen, do it. I don't care if one person shows up. Do the master class. Do the rooms. Do the teachings because he's training you. Like, think about it. If God tells me, you are in a season right now of divine shift. I'm about to expand your ministry. I'm about to expand these things. And let's say I never did all those things while I'm mentioning right now. I never did the Patreon. I never did the membership program. I never started to grow and learn on Clubhouse. I wouldn't have been in a place to be able to when he say, all right, it's time. Let's get ready. Let's go to move. And I want people to understand at the end of the day, when God starts to tell you to do a thing, do it. Because he is preparing us for where he really wants to take us. That was just practice. But now he's like, okay, I'm going to take you here. So for every person, if you're in the beginning, just think about it. Like, this is my training. This is my practice. This is what God needs me to do. Because then he's going to say, get up. It's time to go. You move into this next place. And you're going to be well prepared. You don't you don't fumble. Like, I've been writing prophetic words for years. A lot of people probably didn't know me before. But I've been doing this for years. It's just in this season, more people may see it. Um, so just know. Just do it. Seriously, y'all. Oh, oh, Coquip, thank you. I was so blessed. Yeah, Coquip, we had a one-on-one, -on -one, what was it, last week? That's the prophetic consultation. So if you feel stuck, you feel confused, you feel lost, the, he really has me go up and we see things, we break things off, we shift things. There's this it's a whole thing that we do in the prophetic consultation. Um, so she had one the other, I think, last week. Um, the one-on-one -on -one is in the link. You can click the link to check it out. Oh, y'all, I have to get that word out, okay? That word was just, like, bubbling up in me. Sometimes I get words, and it's just, like, bubbling. That was one of them. It's so crazy because the enemy tried to convince me so long to not do the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it's shifting now. And, and right now, I really feel like there's a shift with us. It's almost like he's using me to help prepare you. I could tell, I, I, I heard him talk say it today. <laughs> Even when he told me to tell you, when we get hit, we get we pick our sword back up and we fight. But I feel like even in this season, it's more so he's using me a little bit closer to help you to where he's taking you. So I definitely noticed that today. Let me get let me get Clubhouse um, and I'll drop the link. I thought I had it on here. All right, let me I'm a let me see. Give me one second. I thought I OK, I'm going to put all the community links up. Clubhouse is on Instagram. Facebook. All right, if you click the link now, you should be able to get to the other channels and the other groups. I need to update this. Like I said, it's a whole bunch of things I need to update y'all. So it's just a lot in this season of prep, not preparation, because I should have already been ready. 
But you get what I'm saying. All right, if you click the link, you should be able to get to Clubhouse. Like I said, Clubhouse is different. Where did my page go? Clubhouse is definitely different. Clubhouse is equipping. It's 100%. This is what we need to do. Um, we have a word on Friday, and he told me to do it on Kingdom Marriage. It's how to position yourself to be found in Kingdom Marriage. So we're doing that one on Friday um, because that goes back to original design. So if you're somebody where God spoke to you about Kingdom Marriage, um, anything like that, he gave me a word on how to position yourself to be found for Kingdom Marriage, and that's on Clubhouse on Friday. So you can see the difference where these are these these perfect words are more so time and season, but it's the how to kind of on Clubhouse where it's like this is what we need to do to get to where God is trying to take us. So if you haven't joined us over on Clubhouse, we have a club, we have a house, we have all these things. Um, and again, I built all these things over time, but now, like he said in the beginning, what did he tell me? He said the time has come, get ready. And I'm telling y'all. Do what God's telling you to do. But you don't want him to open up that door. And he says, the time, listen, how I'm explaining all the things that I've got. For those who've been with me for some time, you know all this stuff. But there's new people who are, who are probably going to get introduced to me. And they don't know all these things. But this is where God says to make sure you're doing those things. Um, instead of trying to get ready at the very end. So all of you above. So yeah, right. I feel like this definitely um, like an equip. Not really. I don't know. It's really just like a... Like a... Like, uh, you know how, like, somebody, like, karate kid kind of thing with you, where there's a, I guess it's a sensei or something with a person who already knows how to war and fight. I feel like that's what he's doing with us. Like, it's like karate kid, where it's like, I've already warred and fought. And he's teaching. He wants you to learn some of that stuff. It's weird. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So, yes. And position yourself to be found. Because there is a position in, like, I'm not saying position, like, go to the club and, like, hang out. Just try to, like, that's not. When we talk about kingdom marriage, that's not positioning yourself. I've heard people talk about going places. I mean, people like, no. It's not how you position yourself, especially when it comes to kingdom marriage. That's not the position that we're talking about. So, I'm breaking that down in the word that he gave me. It's already in my book. So, I'm breaking that down on um, Friday over on Clubhouse. So, let's pray. So, Father God, we come to you. I just pray right now over everyone. I pray that this word encourages your people to believe. That they understand that this is what you are doing in this season. That they understand that you are about to make the impossible happen. Y'all know, um, I hear impossible. Okay, there's a couple. There's a song. I forgot to tell y'all the song. Sorry, y'all. He told me to tell the song. He said the song to encourage you is... Hold on, let me get it. Uh, Tasha Cobbs, y'all know it. I'm I'm getting ready. So Tasha Cobbs, I'm getting ready. Listen to that. Because that's what he said is about to happen. You're getting ready to see something you've never seen. That's the supernatural. So I pray right now that your people are reminded that they are getting ready to see something that they have never seen. That you are about to do a suddenly, immediately, and a divine shift in their life as long as they say focus on you. I pray that they are able to get to a place where they are seeking you. That they remember the words that came out of my mouth saying that the witches are doing what they need to do. The warlocks are studying their books and their, and their words and their teaching and practicing. That they, if they are out here practicing, that we need to do what we, you've called us to do. Today you told me to have your people pray that every dormant spiritual gift is activated in this season. I pray that your people take heed and begin to pray into that. That every gift is activated. Any dormant gifts that they have not used begin to be activated in this season. I speak activation over your people. I speak that they begin to open their mouth and prophesy if the enemy told them to shut their mouth. I pray that they begin to play music again if someone came and told them that they couldn't play. I'm seeing hearts being open right now as I'm saying this. I can feel it right now. That there's some things that people told you to stop doing that you know God told you to do. So I pray that you begin to get back to doing what God told you to do. Because I can feel it right now. And some things that people, some people got in your ear. And God told you to do it. And you stopped doing it. So I pray right now activation in whatever these things that people put down, Lord. That they begin to get back to doing what you've called them to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And that's the thing. Let me add this and I'm going to hop off. Um, when I talk about the supernatural and he told us to pray into any dormant spiritual gifts, talents, that kind of thing, it's because it's what he's going to use to see that supernatural thing happen in the earth. So when you start to pray into any dormant gifts, it's those things that you have not used. Let's say that I, I stopped prophesying. I stopped looking and seeking prophetic words. I'm not going to be as strong in that area. Now, there's some things that he may need you to work on, cultivate, grow, and read books on, activate. 
Because many things, even when we think about the, the, the uh, praying in tongues, there's an activation that happens when you pray in tongues. When it comes to your spiritual gifts, there are, there's an activation that has to happen. So I, I'm hearing him say that in order for you to be used the way that you need to, that he needs to use you, there's an activation. But I'm saying pray into that. Pray into any dormant gifts being activated, gifts and talents being activated. And you're going to see him start to shift and change things. All right, y'all. We got the membership program. We're doing, for um, the people in the membership program, tonight we are doing um, end of the year review. So we did a mid-year review, so we're doing an end of the year review. So I need to go eat and get ready for that. So, y'all, we'll be back next week with this word that is <laughs> something. <laughs> so get ready for next week's word because I don't even know how to deliver this, but I'm going to do it in... All right, I feel good. All right, we'll be back next Wednesday for Prophetic Word Wednesday. Have a great day.